Greetings. Welcome to a live share from Jerusalem. And the Kitzer, the Kuti Maran. And I appreciate all those who are coming in and who can share this video so we get more people to learn the, the Holy Torahs of Rabbi Nachman. Ani Hashem Hu Shemi. I am Hashem, that is my name. It says in Isaiah. I de Shem Daber Batoira. Diburi meir lo hadibur b'cho am koymo yishetzori lasos tshuva al ad she zoyich lasos tshuva as hamishko mamish. When a person pronounces words of the Torah aloud, as he studies, his speech enlightens him regarding all the places where he needs to repent until he merits to do exactly the repentance that he must. Similarly, on each and every occasion, with each bit of repentance that he does, a person ascends from level to level until he comes out of his present low level and arrives at an understanding of the Torah. So the Rebbe speaks at first and he says that you should study Torah aloud. You should hear yourself learning. You know, you, we learn in we, in, I guess in science, you, you, they, if a person wants to go and understand more and re, and have a better recollection of what they learn, they should use more senses. Mm -hmm. So when you study out loud, you're using your mouth, you're using your ears, you're using more senses, you're going to remember it better, and it's saying that it enlightens you more. And it helps the person to repent. By, by hearing the words of the Torah out loud that you're, that you're learning, it leads you to repentance. And with this repentance, you're able to ascend from level to level, madrega to madrega, in, 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 in your Vodas Hashem, in your service of God, to each a higher madrega meaning level, going up and up and up. Now, add to this, if you see when I'm studying a lot, I'm on the, on the live streams, I'm standing up. The Torah, from the time of Moshe Rabbeinu until I think it was Rabbi Gamliel, the Talmud says, I believe is Rabbi Gamaliel, that they used to stand up when they studied Torah in order to show more respect and to have a better recollection of a Torah study. Rabbi Nachman says it's a segula for chen when you stand up when you're studying Torah, meaning that it makes your life, whatever you're doing throughout the day, more graceful. Whenever you can, if you stand up, you'll be able to comprehend your studies possibly better. I find that I study quicker by standing up as well. Even if my legs hurt, sometimes I have pain in my legs, or chronic pain, I'll stand up even with the pain, because I know that the Torah, I'm going to comprehend better. Weiter. When a person is careful, And ever mindful that the honor of Hashem should be unblemished, while he himself is despicable and loathsome in his own eyes, and his own honor means nothing to him with the honor of God, Hashem. He then merits to speak radiant words of the Torah that illuminate from him the way to perfect to perfect repentance. In this manner, he merits profound levels of understanding of the Torah. So when you lower your honor and you increase the honor of God, you're lowly in your own eyes compared to the honor of Hashem, your Creator. 
You're going to speak more wor radiant words of Torah. Words of a Torah are going to come out of your mouth that are beautiful with, with, with wisdom and understanding and das. Ah, he actually least calls a deeper a mayor, she calls a im kim, she me shabrim, a gayus, who had god godless. But a person cannot merit this kind of radiant speech except by breaking pride and conceit. She lo ye limudo, which will cobble his yaher, ule canter, has a shum, all the cabo, rabonuis, with his nasoyus. He should not study Torah out of a desire for honor or out of contentiousness, chas v'shulam, God forbid, or in order to receive a rabbinical position or high status. Breaking one's pride and conceit is also dependent upon mainly one's sexual purity. So you're going to merit this radiant speech, this speech that flows through with great beauty to your fellow Jews, words of Torah that have understanding and are deep, new chidushim. These are going to come about by breaking your desire for wrongful honor from the Torah. You don't want honor and gaiva and, 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 and because of the Torah, your study is completely pure. And if Hashem desires to give you honor for it, that's up to Him. That's, he's, he knows what the world needs. So when you break your pride, as we're going to learn more, you're going to increase your purity levels. Pride is tenement to idolatry. As a result of pride, a person lacks the faculties of speech with which to speak words that are then lighten, and he cannot open his mouth at all. When the Torah comes into his mouth, not only do the words of Torah fail to illuminate the way for him to return to, to good, but the Torah itself becomes physical and darkened as it comes from his mouth. May Hashem save us. So, pride is like idolatry. It's like worshipping idols. When a person is pride, because what is it, what's happening? They think that they're like a creator. They think they're powerful. No, Hashem is powerful. Hashem can take your life away in instance if He wants to. He's in control of the world. Your study is 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 what you were you you came here for. This is what you were created for. So when you you have this pride, your speech is impaired. Your sexual impurity is impaired. Mm -hmm. And there's this uh, there's a darkness from this 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 way that you're doing. Geus and Niuf Tiluyim Zebose Kushe Shoim Rabris Nitzo Migeus with Zoichelor Amelo to Shuvo Ash Zoichelovolis Vunois at Hill Umko Pride and Immorality, pure with with the purity, you go hand in hand. Thus, when a person guards his purity, he is saved from pride and merits the light that illuminates the way for him to repentance until he attains profound levels of understanding in the Torah. So these things go hand in hand. If a person doesn't have pride. Why would he sin? The only reason a person even doesn't have Vera is because they have pride. They think that they are lacking something. That they deserve more. And, and they're, they're angry at God many times. For what? This, is, this causes a person to then um, fail in their sexual impurity. And to be immoral. 
All this because of pride. Iker Mirus Tir Dois Hapar Haparnasasa Vigi also Giani de Pegama Bris Kimi Shishama as Briso Apa Pishuise Lamitesh Shiloishim Vesha Milachois Mazumat and Hem Bechinas Malachois Hamishko and Behem Bechinas Tawi Rois says in Yushai. The bitterness experienced in the struggle to make a living, Parnasa, primarily results from blemishing one's purity. For a person who guards himself in this area, in sexual purity, even though he engages in the 39 types of forbidden labor and in trade, and in trade, his labor is on a level of 39 types of labor performed in the construction of the tabernacle and is like the dew of light. We learn out the laws, the 39 malachos from the tabernacle, from, the, from, from this. And therefore, when you're blemishing your purity, you're failing this area. But when you're guarding this, it's as if you... To the next level here, you know, as if you're like building a temple, you're making yourself into a temple for God. So great is it when a person is pure in their mind. And we see here also that the Hebrew word for do, tal, has a numerical value of 39. Do also connotes the idea of livelihood. Since the substance of the Jews in the desert came from the form of manna, which fell in the morning with do. So it says in Bamidbar. Ava poi game abriso i anius rodefes acharov mam shich alatsmo a ob haparnasasa bigua bigia bigia umi uvimir virus gado vivichinas lamatesh loishim seisha malkois rachamon litzlon. On the other hand, when one blemishes their purity, he is pursued by poverty. He draws upon himself the yoke of earning a living with great struggle and bitterness, and his livelihood is like the 39 lashes, as he learned in Makos. Meshem, save us. So it's like if you're not pure, you're, you're, you're parnasa, that, that Hashem, Hashem provides for all flesh. You know, every, you know, every bird, there's a, there's a worm Hashem puts in his pathway, even for a worm, there's an ant, or there's something for him to eat. Shem provides pranasa for everyone, but it, it's 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 difficult. The person makes it hard. He blocks the light of this pranasa when he's sinning with his purity levels, with immorality. He's blocking this light that's coming down. Hashem wants to give pranasa. He wants to sustain all people, and and make them happy. And your a person is causing himself tremendous blockade to, of of light or from God by not guarding themselves. Shemir Zabris, Yesh Lubo, Shtebuchino, Yesh Misha, Zi Ugo, Bime Hacho, the Apa Pikain, who Shemir Zabriso, Apia Tayro, Shazi Ugo, Beheter, Vegamze, Nikro, Shemir Zabris. Guarding one's purity has two levels. First, there is a person who has relations also on the weekdays. But who nevertheless guards his purity in accordance with the laws of the Torah. This person's relations are in the realm of, of the permitted. And this too is called guarding one's purity. Provided that he keeps himself from transgressing. Hashem save us. Such a person must guard himself with great vig- vi- 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 vigilance in this area. This first level of guarding one's purity is called the lower unification. And through it one merits to grasp the legal areas of the Torah which are referred to as the secrets. There's a second type, a person, however, whose relations are exclusively on Shabbos, his marital relations. This person is in the aspect of the upper unification, and by means of this he also grasps the Kabbalah, the mystical and inner side of the Torah, which is referred to as the secrets of the secrets. It's a person whose relations are exclusively on Shabbos must be extremely careful to conduct himself with holiness so that he may be con- counted among those who guard 
the purity. For as, a, for, as for the small people whose relations are also on weekdays, certainly they need to be even more careful that they do not blemish their purity. Chas v'shalom, God forbid. And that at least they do not transgress the laws of the Torah in this area. Meaning to go in, and for a woman to make sure she goes to the mikvah. And for a man to guard himself in his eyes, Shemir Zainayim, and, and other ways. Even a person who is not holding by this level of Shabbos, which is in Sadiqim would only have relations on Shabbos to Shabbos. When a person guards his purity, that was going outside now back in, when a person guards his, pur- his purity on these two levels, the honor of Hashem is complete, and he merits all the affirmation attributes and attainments until he attains profound levels of understanding of the Torah. The person who has purity, this is what a Tzaddik is, and the Torah becomes open to him. Back in the Hebrew, Yeish Anavo Shehid Tachlis Hagadush Dahainu Shehu Anov Mechama Shu Yodea Shehagadus Mehuza Maoid Al Kenhu Anov Kedei Lehis Yaker Lehis Kabe Nimsa Shehu Anov Bishvil Gadus Vekavoid. There exists a humility whose end is actual conceit. Specifically, this refers to a person who is humble. Because he knows that pride is the most despicable trait. Therefore he acts humble hum, with humility in order to be honored and respected by others. He got loose, he began a sheva, but the avoda, Zorashai de Zeg, all you saw me at some. Therefore, a person must monitor his own behavior very carefully and distance himself to the utmost from pride by going to the opposite extreme, as our sages of Blessed Mary said, be exceedingly humble of spirit, says in Avos. For pride corresponds to the seven houses of idolatry on account of which the Jewish people were exiled from their land. What is more, the reason we have not yet returned to our land is because people pursue honor due to their own pride and conceit. May Hashem save us. So, the Rambam in Hilchos Deos says that a person in their midos, in their character traits, should always be balanced. Meaning that the best thing in life for a person with everything, you know, is always to keep a balance, not to be too extreme in anything. And so in all the character traits, it's important to have balance. But when it comes to pride, we find that this is not the case. Because pride is very bad for a person. It distances Hashem. It hurts their soul tremendously. The Torah doesn't stick with the person that's pride. So, a person has to stay away from this, because pride leads to sin. A person wouldn't sin if they didn't have pride. So, when it comes to this aspect, we don't look for the middle ground. We look to be humble, to serve a God with humility, not for reward, even though there is reward. But lishma with all our hearts, and even if we don't understand what we're doing, and we do it by rote, you know, shelo lishma leads to lishma. Doing things not for the sake of Hashem, but because we're supposed to, through fear, love, or just trying to do the right thing, will lead eventually to a person doing what they need to do. And this concludes the lesson. To summarize, we learned about speaking Torah out loud. Learning Torah out loud leads a person to do tshuva and repent. And it leads a person from Madrego to Madrego to study Torah out loud. I spoke about a little bit about standing up while learning how good, how important that is outside from the Torah that we have here. We spoke about running away from honor. We spoke a lot about the importance of purity. That purity and pride go hand in hand. And pride leads to immorality.
So we have to stay away from these this this, this pride. We have to be more gracious to Hashem for what He gives us, not thinking what more we want because, you know, we belong to be in a better position amongst our peers. We spoke about the light of the 39 Malachos. We spoke about that purity leads to Parnassa, sustenance. A person is pure, they're going to have sustenance. If they're not pure, they block that light from shining down. We learned in the previous lesson that the mitzvah sits is a great rectification for Parnassa and for sexual purity. Rabbi Nachman speaks about the saying the Ten Psalms. He can aklali for this also. That's a great segula and rectification. We learn in many places about the importance of mikvah to to go and be pure. And that summarizes the lesson. And I thank everyone for coming. Please share this so we can get more people to attend to the live shirim. And I wish you all the blessings in the world. of the holy of the holy of the holy of the holy I'm a bit tired, so my voice is hoarse. Not easy giving a share at one in the morning, um, just because that's the time that everyone in America is, is going to attend. But we do our best. Shalom, shalom.